Welcome everybody to our broadcast. I'm Alisa Meredith of Tailwind and I am joined today by Kate All of Simple Pen Media. Hi Kate. Hi, how's it going? Oh good, good. We haven't really gotten to catch up from the break. I know. Happy 2018. Oh goodness, I think I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> After this I'll be ready maybe. <laughs> After this, we'll be ready. Yeah, I, I do. I do. I talked with a friend this week that she sent me this really great. Um, you know how there's the Hugge type Norwegian thing with candles? Oh, and yes. Yeah, yeah. H Y G G E thing that I yeah, I never right. pronounce it right ever. <laughs> yes. Well, there's actually something about between Christmas and New Year's called like Ram Jewel. And I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sure. But it's talking about like when you take this rest and you, you know, really dial back. I think I just had so much rest last week that my brain is trying to catch up. So I do feel ready for 2018, but feel like, you know, you come back from vacation and you're like, Whoa. Yeah, would you hold up your to-do list for just a moment? Oh, yes, because <laughs> I just showed you. You did show me, yes, that's appalling. This is just today. <laughs> But I did, I will say that some of that goes into my Friday and my Friday is what I build into every month called like my CEO day. So some of that will go into Friday. But if I don't write it down, when it's like flooding into me, oh, like a brain dump, I forget. You forget so. or else it kind of nags at you. That's that's what I find. Yes, you yes. can never, it's like you can't stop thinking about it. And it's yeah. like uh, enough already. I'll write yeah. it down. So. Yes. So it, is anybody else feeling that way? Maybe a little overwhelmed from some time off and all their goals, yeah, all their their resolutions. And I get, I don't even do those, so we're just gonna no. throw those out of the window right now. I think that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I um I was at the gym yesterday morning. I thought, why is why are why they so people? packed? Oh, oh, right. <laughs> yes, I know. Give it about three weeks; it'll be back to normal. So. Oh, I know. I was working out with my trainer two weeks ago, and she's like, "It's so dead here." I'm like, "Yeah, but you know, it's not going to be dead in two weeks." And she's like, "Oh, I forgot about that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, oh, Jenna, Jenna has that list all the time. I'm sorry, yes. but we are going to cross something off your list today, and that yeah. is how to come up with a Pinterest marketing strategy. Hmm. Now, when, when I think about Pinterest marketing strategy, I think about learning about your customers and about your content and coming up with a plan, like for your profile, for you, what your activities are going to be. Is that what you think of as, as, as a strategy for Pinterest? Yeah, I do. Very similar in the sense of like the goals piece. Like what's my goal? What's my mm -hmm. end goal for why I'm even using it, which I think we should ask about all social media platforms. Like, why are we investing in it as opposed to it's just the thing to do? Like, right. you know, everybody's just going to go to Instagram because that's where you go now. But it's like, really, why do we do it? Like you said, what's your customer? What's your end goal? What's your monetization goal? Why are you doing it? And I feel like if you have that why, you can really go forward in a strategy and you can weather the storms of a strategy, like the frustrations of it. When you don't feel like it's working, you can go back to your why and go, this is why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's not for these peripheral metrics that we sometimes see, like follower numbers and stuff like that. There's a greater why. Yeah. So what would be a common why when you when you start working with a new customer? You know, for a lot of ours, it is we work with a lot of blogger content creators, but we are starting to work with the e-commerce side of things, too. But a lot of it is really to get more eyes on either content or products like their okay. why is how can we get more people over there to get exposure and then eventually purchase a product or build their email list or click on an affiliate link. A, a big part of it for our clients is the monetization piece. How can oh, I use yeah. it? to make more money in whatever arena that is. For the majority of them, it's affiliate marketing. Okay. Um, you know, so that would be the majority. Yeah, well, that that seems like that's as it should be, right? Yeah. If you're in, yeah, why else? Otherwise, it's just an expensive, time-consuming hobby, which is fine if that's what you want, <laughs> however. Or a really expensive part of your marketing budget. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. yeah. So most of the people, when they come to you, they already have kind of a content strategy in place. Yes. Is that usually the case? Okay. Yeah, they do. We have a lot of people who already have a lot of content built in. But also, like I said, we're getting these new clients who are e-commerce who have been 
creating their own products who've been, you know, creating their own stuff and they're kind of just exhausted a little bit. So they, they feel like they don't have time for the content creation piece. And so they don't have time to create images. So we're feeling like we need to start creating images for them at least that fit on Pinterest for their products because people just feel stretched in so many different directions. Mm -hmm. And I think especially this first time of year, like people stop and go, where am I going to allocate my time and my money? And that makes sense. Yeah. How am I going to invest in it? Yeah. I, I think maybe, maybe for people like me or, or some other, maybe, maybe marketers specifically, I'm not sure, but um, we kind of enjoy that time we have just to create images because it's a little distraction. But if you're already a maker or creative person, then it's probably just feels like more work. <laughs> so it I does. get it. I get it. Yeah. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so let's go through um, what kind of questions we ask a new client when they want to create a Pinterest strategy. Uh, and, you know, with that in mind, people can, can kind of write them down or just think about it themselves. How, how would I answer this question? Because that's, this is how we come to a strategy. So why don't you want to start with one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for us, when clients come to us, we have them fill out a full branding form. And one of the very first things we ask them is what are you known for? Like, what do people come to you for? What are they, you know, if even Google searches, how high do you rank on Google and what for? And some people will say, well, I rank really high for this, but like, this is where I want to go. And there, there is that tension. So when we can see that a little bit, it helps us determine how we're going to pin, you know, maybe the, the main strategy needs to be pinning a lot of what Google or what they're, you know, they keep ranking high for, but a little dose of what they want to be known for. So we want to get that picture first and foremost of maybe what is their vision statement? What's their purpose statement? So we can understand their brand. So then that leads into a little bit of like, what are your top posts on your site? What are the ways in which you monetize? Mm -hmm. What are your goals for the year? Like, what do you hope to achieve out of using us for your Pinterest marketing? And then also figuring out like have for us, especially as a services side, like have they had any other experiences with people managing for them? That's important for us going into a strategy and what, what that has looked like because people either have had a good experience or a negative experience and that shapes that shapes a little bit of your strategy too, because you either love Pinterest and you can dive into it, or you can think I'm not a Pinteresty person. This doesn't really fit me. So we want to get a little bit of a whole picture of their vision, their mission, what they've experienced, and then what their goals are. And then if they know anything already about their Pinterest boards or profile, because oh, yeah. some people have a lot in their head and then they don't necessarily tell you. So you want to know, you know, what is it that you know about your Pinterest account? Because each Pinterest account is unique mm -hmm. to that profile. It has its own culture. It has the way it works. So we need to tap into that. And I think everybody needs to tap into that. What are your people clicking on? What are they saving? You know, what's happening inside Pinterest analytics and Google analytics to give you that picture of the profile? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I think, you know, when you ask, how do you monetize? Sometimes it can be surprising. Like you might look at their site and never realize that they have this whole thing going on over here that you could also tap into. So important yep. to really, if you're thinking about this for yourself, think about all the things that feed into your channel. Is it a service? Is it a product? Is it affiliate? Is it a combination of all of them so that we can work all that into your strategy? Um, and we mentioned a little bit about knowing your customer. So to mm -hmm. me, that's one of the most important things is to get inside the mind of the customer when you're setting up a Pinterest strategy. And sometimes people will say, well, I don't really know. Like if you say, give me a buyer persona, that that's kind of a, that's a marketing jargon term that nobody mm -hmm. wants to hear and no one wants to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, sometimes I'll have them think, who is the best customer you ever had? Mm. So tell me who they were and why they were the best customer. And then you can dig in from there. Like, um, let's say my best customer ever was Kate all. And so who is she? Right. So I know basically your age, your family status, where you live, the kinds of publications that you like to read. 
the activities that you might be interested in that aren't directly related to what I'm doing, but then I can, I can kind of become all things mm -hmm. to my best customer who is Kate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of uh, bloggers use the term avatar. Uh, That's yeah. another kind of marketing jargon too, as well. Mm -hmm. And I asked um, a person who was thinking about using our services that I said, do you know, your avatar and she knew it so well like okay. it's it, she had a name attached to it too she's such and such she has two kids she's this age she's struggling with this this and this and i was like you always she knew who she was talking to whenever mm -hmm. she did anything in marketing and i think that is so valuable because then you can hit your target each time and it can go back to your why you know mm -hmm. like this is why we do it for this particular avatar and right. if you don't have that, I find that people, whether customer, or avatar, or whatever, buyer persona, you start to spin a little bit. Yes. And that's where yes. you end up, you hear a lot of tidbits of what works and doesn't work for other people and you get sucked into it. And then you end up spinning and going, I don't know who I'm marketing to anymore, which creates a mess in your brain and a mess does. on your Pinterest profile. It does. it does. And it becomes unclear to anyone who you're trying to talk to. So yeah, yeah, definitely keep that in mind. If you have to print it out and put it on your wall, that's, that's fine. Yes. I like to ask too, if they've ever had any keyword research done. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah, because Sometimes they have all this stuff over here that they're using for marketing that they never thought maybe you would want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anytime you can get that. So asking as a person who maybe has not done this yet and would need to do it, how would you go about finding somebody to do this keyword research for you? Can you do it on your own? You can definitely do it on your own. I mean, okay. you can Google anything these days, right? Yes, <laughs> but, true. but if I were starting with the idea of, of using it for Pinterest marketing, I would probably do most of it on Pinterest okay. using um, guided search, right? Mm -hmm. And also the auto complete when you mm -hmm. start typing in a term and then underneath that, the little bar will pop up related terms and you can go down the longest rabbit hole ever. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, I would look at things too. Actually, we're going to get to another thing I would look at, but it's in your analytics that will help you with other keywords that you'd never, never would think of. Um, uh, but let's see what else. Uh, I like to ask about competition, who their competition is. Like go spy them out and see what are they doing that's really good that we could do even better. Super smart. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. why reinvent the wheel? Somebody's already done it. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and you know what you can actually see too is um, you can see what they're doing with their images. You can yeah. see what they're doing with their board names. And sometimes too, what we find is we think somebody is strong at their game and then we go to their profile and it's kind of a mess. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, they're not doing as good as I thought, you know, or they're, you know, and you have the opportunity then to look at what they're doing and make it better, you know, absolutely. and I think that's always good to look at your competition always. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, one of the other things I like to ask, and this, this kind of gets into the content planning, which we're going to cover next month, which I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. Um, but questions like, um, what life situations make people look for what you have? Uh, mm. What questions are they asking? And that also can go into your keyword research. So if you think about what questions are they asking that would ultimately maybe months from now lead them to you. Mm. So you have to get inside the head of your avatar, your buyer persona and start asking those questions, write them out. And it's going to kind of start to reveal what kind of words you should have, what kind of content you should be focusing on and definitely the keywords. And I like that you be. said like what they'll be searching later or it, like really thinking ahead mm -hmm. because what they, what they're doing now is not necessarily what they might see on Pinterest or how you match up. Like we've talked about before, Pinterest is the slow burn over mm -hmm. a long amount of time. Like you don't, I think maybe that's probably the most important thing to think about when creating a Pinterest marketing strategy is your mindset that this is an instant success. This right. isn't something you dive into Pinterest and you get these poppy things on your page views. This is a long or sales or whatever it is. This is a long-term investment 
like you would invest in Google or like you would invest in a YouTube strategy. Like it has to be nurtured and built yes. and it's not just going to be instant success. So having that in your mind before you even dive into any of these questions will make such a huge difference because then you can know like, okay, it's coming. It's like the little engine that could, right? Yeah. Like, all right, I, think I, I, think I, I think I can. I think I can. And you know, <laughs> I hear those emails. I see them come through all the time that people say like, I've been at this for two to three months and I don't see any results. And it's like, you got to give it longer. Yeah. Like you, you're just sorry. That's like yeah. the worst no, answer no, ever no, to no, give no. somebody. True. It's true. And I think that if you start with this strategy process, it kind of helps, right? Because you're investing this time and it does take some time. It takes hours um, when I've done it um, and it's going to have to keep changing. So yeah. I think this is a good first step. Um, so I, another thing I like to ask people is who who would you love to partner with? Like hmm. who is complimentary in your industry that you would like to work with? So could you create a group board together? Could you have a, a tailwind tribe together? Um, so try to get them to thinking about that collaboration, which doesn't always naturally happen on Pinterest. People tend to right. get into a vacuum in their own little world, which is fine. That's what that's what Pinterest is about, really. Um, but when you're using it as a business, when you can support other people, that's when it can be super powerful and it can yeah. speed things up a little bit. Yeah, definitely. That's a good I never really thought about that, but that is definitely a good way to build collaboration. And that's what people's biggest question is, is who do I join a group board with? Who do I join these things with? Oh, yeah. And then having, and then uh, your question is perfect. That's who you join group boards with. That's who you collaborate with. People whose business complements yours, yeah. not necessarily compete. Competes. Although there's room, there's room for competition. Totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there is. And yeah. I think, especially if you do have people that are in your space and you champion one another, that speaks mm -hmm. volumes to a lot of other people, yes, you know? It does. So. Yeah. So I think um, one of the last questions I'd like to ask people is what current trends should we know about or what kind of seasonal things should we know about? Mm. I would say, well, the planner that we have together, yes. Tailwind and Simple it's Pin, is a great, a great one. one to start with because that will show you all year how you can plan for and what you can prepare for. But I think it's really important to think about, let's say you sell a product that people use more in the winter months than they do in the summer months. Mm -hmm. You really need to be strategic about marketing maybe more heavily in the winter months and then still market in the summer months for sure. But you definitely want to figure out when are they buying and is there a seasonal effect to it? And if there is, hit the ground running during this time, run promoted pin campaigns on top of your organic strategy, like mm -hmm. really maximize that time frame. And in those off seasons, do a lot of curating, do a lot of um, really building really great boards and momentum so that you're prepared for whenever your seasonal bursts are. Um, there was a guy, I, I use him as an example a lot, but it was such a great conversation he actually worked for an organic lawn fertilizer company. It was that social media marketing world last year. And he was trying to figure out how oh, Pinterest yeah, could play to in. Together. Yeah, exactly. He was there and he oh, was like, I nice. just, yeah. yeah, he's like, I don't understand. Like, how would I make this work? And, you know, trying to wrap his brain around it. But we were trying to give him ideas for, you could really create this great strategy with you know, these tips and tricks, especially in the summer months, mm -hmm. like what are the, what's the best way to water your lawn and how to use organic fertilizer. I, Jessica was there too, right? <laughs> yes. He was very that. memorable. <laughs> I feel like I need, we need, he needs to come back again. Anyway, it was really cool because you could see we were, gen we were getting these ideas, but he had a hard time thinking outside of like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, right? right. Like, how do I invest in a content strategy or something that is very targeted towards people who care about organic lawn care, which right. and, they might and, be searching for that. Yeah. And, and so you, and you've mentioned this before, but talking to your friends who are not marketers or, well, I mean, he talked to us, yeah. we are marketers, but you probably don't have a million marketer friends. So talk to your friends who use Pinterest and say, what could I pin related to this? Would yep. you be interested in saving to one of your boards? And yes. that needs to go in your strategy that and and what you need to pin when. Yeah, 
definitely mm -hmm. get the planner, which I, I put the link in the in the comments. Um, but also look at your own calendar, like Kate was saying. So when are your seasonal ups and downs? When does a certain product sell better than another or a certain service sell better? And put that in your strategy so that you'll say, oh, in, it's April. I need to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, super duper smart. Yeah. So you, you kind of mentioned this a little bit, but what are the things that you look at in Pinterest analytics to help you build a strategy for somebody? What should, what should we look for? So a few things like I, I have to be honest, like anyone who's listened to me before, like I've been a little down on Pinterest analytics because I felt like it didn't pull out as much as I wanted. But once I really dug around, I realized that there's three sections to it and your profile, um, your I can't remember what that middle one and people you reach mm -hmm. and then your website. Yep. So there's those three right there. So under your profile, I love to go straight for the clicks. Where are people clicking? And I'll always do 30 day time frames. I don't do seven or 14 just because yeah, I feel like short. It, it's too short. Exactly. So doing that 30 day time frame, I really look at, you know, what are the pins that are getting the most clicks, even the ones that are not my own, because Pinterest oh, yeah, will show a combination. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because if we're talking about content planning, like we'll talk about next month, this is a jackpot place that you would go for an editorial calendar if you're looking at creating content throughout the year and you're stumped on ideas because what your people are clicking on sends you this signal that they're interested in. So what you can, and then seeing what your things that are people are clicking on, like, I have this how to clean up Pinterest boards pin yes, that I, I released that well. like, yeah, <laughs> spring of 2016, I think. Well, it's taking off again right now. Like I'm just getting oh, this perfect. huge spikes of traffic because people are going into organize. Like how, you know, remember that yeah. even though I pinned it in spring of 2016, it's given me traffic all of that year in 2017 and now into 2018. And that's almost a two year old post. Yeah. Like, it's still bringing that. So just to be thinking, um, you know, really about how can, um, how can I use those clicks to really inform what I'm going to create in the future? And then to look at those posts and also monetize them, like, or okay. look at the products, like that would be number one. I okay, think wait, number, I, I don't go, oh, go ahead. yet. Cause okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you're seeing that this pin is back. Yeah. Cleaning up Pinterest boards. So how would that make shift your Pinterest strategy? Would it? You know, I think what it would do is it would shift how often I am repinning that pin again. Okay. So maybe I haven't pinned it for a while and I've forgotten about it, which I have. So now I'm going to pin it to a few more of my other boards and I'm going to actually share with my audience again on my other social profiles, either the actual link to the post on my site and a pin it link with it, like pin in this for later. I see that it's getting popularity. So it's going to become more front and center to my daily strategy right now to be pinned again because people are finding it relevant. So that's, and then it can inform a bunch of other places on Facebook and my email list and all of that. So okay. Okay. that's what it would do there. Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> so one really cool trick that I love that I um, haven't used in a little while, but I need to revisit it is in that middle section, the people you reach, it's mm -hmm. kind of broken down like demographics and location. But one of the things you can click on is interests. Oh, and that's then, my favorite. Ah, I love it. <laughs> it shows you all these interests. And then below, I love that you can see where the names of the boards that people are pinning your pins yes. to. I mean, yeah. talk about like keyword research, like right yeah, there. Yeah, that was one of my, yes, that was one of the ones mm -hmm. I was going to bring up. Absolutely. So all three of mine were in that section. And the one, the one that you didn't mention, and, and I will say about interest, you can look at the interests of people who follow you, but you can also look at the interests of all the people who see your pins, which is yeah. obviously going to be a much bigger um, selection of pinners. So I suggest I was looking at that Yeah, <laughs> with followers, not follower count and following, not, not really mattering as nearly as much anymore. Nope. Um, we really want to know just who's seeing my pins and what else are they interested in? And, and now I use that to help expand the different subject matter of my boards. Mm. So, so if I see one that's quotes, there's almost always, <laughs> People are interested in quotes, no matter what account. So I'll think, how can I create a board title 
that has something to do with quotes, but also has to do with my business. So hmm. mine might be like entrepreneurial quotes. Um, but like if you were an Etsy seller, you know, it would be totally different. But just think yeah. about can I even if it, on the outset you're thinking, well, my my account has nothing to do with this. Maybe maybe it does. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like, how else have you used interest or how else do you, would you think about using interest? I like interest a little bit as it relates to promoted pin campaigns. Okay. Like I look at maybe what the keywords with the names of those interests are, yeah. and then yeah. I'll kind of try to dig a little bit deeper into those and look at, you know, I feel like food and drink pops up on like everybody's, oh, it does. Yeah. but everybody is not necessarily related to food and drink, yeah. but trying to figure out, like I created a best food pins board and I titled it the best food pins board. Cause I wanted to showcase like what pins I thought were really eye catching and mm. had good recipes. And that was actually when I started simple pin like four years ago. So this board has actually become one of my most popular boards yeah. because I have like, 11, I have like 1500 pins on there now. And these are ones that like, I can say to a marketer is like, I love these pins because of how they look, how they, you know, there might be ones that are pinned on there. Cause I like the recipe too, but for the majority of the time, I love how they look and I love that they're catchy. So you can create a different spin. I'm not a food blogger. I don't do anything with yeah. food. There's nothing. So so is there anything in the description of the board or maybe should yes. there be that mm -hmm. says these are why you're pinning it? Exactly. Okay. Yep. So I tell people like these are pins that are eye catching. I love the images, you know, that it's kind of where I, what I did with anything I wanted to go outside of the niche or something I wouldn't create is I put the spin of pins on it yeah, so that, you know, people would know that's why. So. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. Very good. And then, um, there oh the other one in people you reach interests you can also look at the brands that your followers or people yeah. who see your stuff that they engage with and that's a way to look not just at your competition but people that you could interact with mm -hmm. so or or point. you might also find out that okay this is where they get their information then mm -hmm. i should be pinning some of that stuff too mm-hmm yeah, that's a really, really good one to see. And what you do find over time with that is some look very similar, like mm -hmm. the same brands kind of start popping up. Uh, yeah. But, you know, part of that is just because they're super popular and well known. You know, like Etsy seems to be always on the list. Yeah. For true. some reason. Um, but, you know, just poke around in there. See mm -hmm. what you can mine from there because there's so much different data in there. And it, I would say when you go into Pinterest analytics, if you are afraid of not of not being productive or spending too much time, set a timer and just do like 30 minutes in there. I really don't think you need longer than 30 minutes. I think you can accomplish everything in that time frame of just yeah. going through making notes and create a Google Doc too and make notes as you see them. And then as you go along, you can build in that document as to what you're seeing. And then you can see changes. I think, especially if you're going to do a long-term game on Pinterest, which you should, yes, definitely. then you could see this evolution of everything happening over time instead of going, what happened six months ago? You have it written down. You have right. what you saw. Right. And in the context of this creating a strategy, um, I'll often, if, if the person, if the person already has an account, it's so much easier to start from scratch. <laughs> but if, yes. they already, if they already have an account, you know, you, um, we'll talk about board audits in a minute, but it's helpful to have taken those notes on, okay, what are the other boards your pins are being saved to? What are the mm -hmm. names of those? What's in them? Um, what, are, what is your competition pinning? Have all that kind of written out. So when you go through your board audit, you can see, okay, what fits, what doesn't, what can I repurpose? Yep. So kind of writing that down as you look through your analytics. We have an important note section to each one of our files for each one of our clients that our account specialists fill out once a month. And okay. so we can, if we need to, we can pop in and see what's happening. So we can just come in, yeah. know what's going on, know what the strategy is. And then if it changes or if anything, you know, the amount of pins you're pinning changes, you make notes of that. So you can kind of see. Good. But, mm -hmm. Okay. So now, Anytime I have done a strategy, it was required that, that the person have a Tailwind account. And the reason was there's one thing, especially in Tailwind analytics, 
that was super important and that would be board insights. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I would always look at board insights to see, okay, which boards, even if I don't particularly like them, <laughs> Yes. for their account. Which boards can oh, I not really? touch? Yes. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. um, which group boards do we need to leave? Mm -hmm. Which boards do we need to be spending more time on? So that's mm -hmm. that would be like my number one Tailwind Analytics application. That coupled with strategy. Pin Inspector. Okay, so how would you boards. use how would you use that for your So strategy? how we use that is we look at the board list and then we analyze the pins on the board because mm -hmm. we might see that there's a good virality number that's like mega high and then like a low engagement number. Mm -hmm. And that might be because of older pins from a long time ago did super duper well. Okay. And then now anything we've pinned currently just is not resonating. So we can look at that and hop over to the pin inspector and analyze all those pins that have been pinned to the board and see well, every pin I've pinned in the last six months only gets like one or three repins, whereas before they were getting like 15 to 30, right? Yeah. So I think pin inspector is a huge tool for us as a team because then we can see where we want to spend the majority of our efforts pinning instead of just throwing darts into the wall and hoping they stick. Oh, so it great. really informs, is this actually worth our time anymore? Okay, so you look at um, like the health of the board overall, like is it kind of declining? Um, should I not spend that much time on the board? And do you also look at like the kinds of pins that do well? And, yeah. And realize, okay, I should pin more of these and less of these. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And then we couple that with Google Analytics. So it's kind of like this trifecta okay. of analytics, like <laughs> Pinterest, Tailwind, Google, and yeah. seeing kind of like what's actually resonating with the ultimate goal of being a click. So it will be honest about that. Like that's our first metric that we're looking at. Sometimes we can have something with a high number of saves, but a very, very low number of clicks, you know, quotes are notorious for that. They get a yeah. lot, a lot of saves, but for not some, a lot of clicks. Yeah. Infographics can be like that as well. Sometimes not yeah. always, but a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times, which, you know, they're very great to look at, but we have to remember like all the information lives on it. Right. So then so there's really no something. Learning. Yeah. Don't share it all. Or although I feel like it's a, it's a good idea to share a combination of like, okay, the infographics are great because they get your engagement rate overall up, which right. should lift your, all your pins up a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so like a mix is probably a good idea. A mix is a good idea. Yeah. And then it kind of boosts it overall. So yeah, that's how we use it. Tailwind's especially helpful on a cleanup. You know, a lot of times if people hire us just to do a cleanup of their boards, mm -hmm. sometimes we'll get their tailwind access so we can really evaluate boards because sometimes Pinterest analytics will tell you what boards are really popular, but it seems to be that there's again, this older pin effect that really adds to it that mm -hmm. makes it so high in the ranks in Pinterest analytics that we can go deeper into tailwind. We can see the board insights and know yes, in fact, it is still a good board or no, it's old stuff that's driving most of the traffic. Really good. Okay. Okay. So let's say we've been pinning for a while. Um, we have a bunch of boards. Maybe it's, we feel like it's kind of a mess. So you said that your pin on doing Pinterest cleanup is super popular. We should share the link to that in the comments when you get yes. a chance. Um, so I, I always made board audit a part of the strategy. Um, so I would start with, and I'll let you share that if you want to. But, yeah. Um, I would start with the the top. I would look at top impressions for the boards, top clicks, top engagement score, and mark those all out on a spreadsheet so I would know. Okay, these are top performers. So mm -hmm. you need to either see if you can leave them and improve them or repurpose them somehow. Like just don't don't wipe them out <laughs> because yeah. because they have value. So what else do you look at when you look at a board? Well, I am actually, I'm looking it up right now so I can refresh. Oh, it okay. Is, okay. So I created it April of 2017. Oh, okay. So, or maybe that's when we republished it. I can't remember. So yeah, no, it was more than, a, it was more than a year ago. So yeah. we must have republished it. Cause we, cause you know, when you take screenshots of Pinterest and then Pinterest changes everything. You yeah, have to update it. So yes, <laughs> this was updated a year after it was posted. So, okay. um, our kind of our step one is, um, you know, like a profile cleanup in general, like mm -hmm. does your profile still match your brand? Like if you've changed something over a little bit of time, if you've, you know, rebranded, does your profile, if I landed on it, does it scream, Elisa Meredith is this, you know, right? Do we know that? So that would kind of be like that first one. 
And then the second one really moving into, like you said, moving and retitling boards, like really mm. looking at, are these boards still relevant? Do I still want to keep them? Um, and then into keywording things. Cause I find a lot of people are still surprised about the keyword element on Pinterest, that Pinterest is very aware of how they match up searches mm -hmm. with of the, both the pin descriptions and the board names and yeah that um we can no longer have like yum or <laughs> whatever <laughs> or you can but nobody will find you it. can exactly <laughs> and then like and then the last was like group board effectiveness like yeah, really yes. looking into are these group boards worth our time and then we did we have in the past talked about like group board or like board order, like having your profile have an order of boards, like your yeah, personal boards. Yeah, it used to be top. a big thing. Yeah, it did. And now, you know, we find that there isn't a lot of people that visit profiles, mostly because when the typical user hops on, they're scrolling or they're searching and they might come to your profile, but it's not a huge, huge amount. In fact, really funny story. I was at the cell phone store. Um, a couple of days ago, buying a new cell phone and they asked what I did and I told them and they just like flooded me with all these ideas about Pinterest. And was, they had said like, I don't even know how to follow people anymore. And I thought that was really huh. interesting. And, and this was a millennial. I think she was like 19. She's like, I don't even see the point of following people. I just go for what I'm interested in. So, you know, and the other two kind of backed that up and said, you know, yeah, we just go, we search what we want and we find these things and we save them. And, you know, it was very interesting point to say like our profiles might, might not be as important as we thought, but we can't forsake the keywording piece of making sure your profile matches all the keywords that you want to rank for and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's super important in the board titles as well for the board title keywords to match the keywords in your pin description. And I'm just going to share a link to what I think is one of the best articles um, out there for basic Pinterest strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not just basic. It, it even talks about pinning pins to multiple boards to link yes. the boards in a way you're teaching uh, Pinterest artificial intelligence, what these pins are about and what fits mm -hmm. together. Um, and it's just, it's super important because some people feel like, uh, can I pin my pin more than once? Yes. Can I pin my pin to more than one board? Yes, you need to. And Pinterest is even telling us right there in print. Yes, mm -hmm. share it. Yeah, a lot of people are wary about pinning something more than once. Yeah. They're like, oh, I can pin it to multiple boards. And it's like, yes, you can. Like, yeah. go for it. And that's mm -hmm. important, like you said, to link the boards. Yeah. So let's talk about the tasks that go into it. So now we okay. kind of know like, okay, our profile is good. We know our boards are relevant according to what our audience is interested in, according to what we do and what we sell. Um, and they support our goals. So what am I doing? Uh, what am I doing every, like a couple times a week? A couple times a week. So yeah. I would say even daily, just pinning being consistent, mm -hmm. pinning your content onto your boards, maybe looking at your competition, just kind of spending some time on Pinterest, mm -hmm. um, pinning your stuff and pinning other people's stuff too, like doing complimentary content, just being active. I think that's the biggest thing. And probably the biggest hurdle for people is they don't know how to do that in a way that doesn't take up a lot of their time. And I think it can be done like 10 to 15 minutes a day and you're done. You don't, it doesn't have to be a lot, but as long as you're touching base with the platform for sure. And looking at it on your phone, I find a lot of people who work on a computer, um, work on desktop, don't spend a lot of time looking at Pinterest on their phone. And I think you don't have to do that every day. Maybe that's like a, a weekly task, like once a week, but do look at what your site looks like on your phone at least once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. and it also helps to, to see the changes in the, in the platform. Like, um, we yeah, last noticed... time you and I noticed something, wasn't it on this call where it was like something I had was totally different than what yes. you had on the phone. Yeah. And I don't even remember what it was. Yeah. I had but... the bubbles at the top. I have bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still don't have bubbles. Um, you still don't. Oh my yeah, word. I don't think so. I need um, to look to see if I do. <laughs> but Danny at Tailwind noticed that remember you used to be able to follow people from mobile. Like underneath their pin, it would have who pinned it and you can follow. You can't That's do that gone. anymore. 
That's yeah. gone. So yeah, you know. yeah, it has visit. Like you can visit the site, but that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but it so is heavily on the tried this. Like add a pin or a photo. Yes, yes, I love that. Okay, okay. So daily tasks would be to pin. So um, I don't, I don't think I would ever suggest pinning less than five times a day. Mm -mm. And I always no. find five great things to pin in a day. And you, don't have to, and you don't have to do it live, right? So Tailwind is here. Tailwind is great Pinterest scheduler. Mm -hmm. um, give it a try. It'll save you a ton of time. But I do think it is good to go on Pinterest and use it yourself. So while you're there, <laughs> go ahead and yeah. pick some stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I yes. would add and to that. Yeah, go ahead. No, no. I interrupted you. So you finish. I finish. Okay. Well, I think I may be going a little different direction. So totally fine. <laughs> I was gonna say, a couple of times a week also go into your tailwind tribes and that goes along with the scheduling, but that allows you to support other people and to put your content in so they can support you as well. Yeah, definitely. Collaborative. Be thinking collaborative on Pinterest and be yeah. thinking reciprocity, like what you share, somebody else will share. Like, don't just throw your stuff in there and hope they'll share. Be a good team player and share from their stuff as well. That's right. Yeah. Okay. What were you going to say? Well, I was just getting lost in the app, of oh. course. <laughs> okay. So I was going to say, like, it's what I think is really interesting that I pointed out to somebody today in a consult call before this was just that important, like how Pinterest wants to create this ideal feed for you and this ideal feed for users. And so really trying to think about your person during the week too, like in your tasks and think about what they would be searching and think about the, how they would be interacting with a lot of this stuff because Pinterest wants to make our smart feeds smart, right? Yeah. So how do we get into their smart feeds and what are they searching this week? So just be thinking about that as you're pinning. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. So I had also added um, to create some great images. So if you have a piece of content that came out that week, that's great. You should pin that. You should schedule it to go out on all your boards and use interval pinning and tailwind. So that's not, not like all at once. You should put it in your tribes. Um, yeah, that was, yeah. So if you don't have something new that comes out, just make some new images for some old posts. Give them a little yeah. new life. <laughs> you can have as many images per post as you want. Yeah. You know, a lot of people ask me, should I have three or should I have five? It doesn't matter. You yeah, can have yeah, one. Or five. Cool. <laughs> exactly. Just do whatever works for you. There's no, I think that's also another thing and mindset piece in the beginning of creating a strategy is like, there isn't these magic numbers or magic piece, like five pins a day or 10 pins a day or using whatever there. Pinterest doesn't work like that. Like it's, it's not Facebook. It's not, you don't write certain things or not write certain things. It really is getting, you have to do the work to get to know what your person is pinning. Yeah. Good. Okay. So then I would also suggest going back and looking at some of your older content. Um, when I have started with a new customer, I export all their blog post URLs to a spreadsheet. And then I set up a little, if this, then that mm. program. So that every time a new blog post comes out, it goes in the spreadsheet. So use that spreadsheet to keep pinning older stuff that's still that's still relevant. Mm, that's a good idea. <sighs> Writing you. that down. <laughs> okay. That's really good. Because I think anything you can do with automation, you know, like you said, with the if this, then that, like mm -hmm. filling in these it's things. My favorite recipe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So then like how often do you go in and review Pinterest, Google and Tailwind analytics? Um, well, there's for myself and there's for other people. Um, no, let's go with for other people. Cause I know you do a better job for other people. Cause exactly. that's just the way. <laughs> exactly. Um, I would say, um, all the time, like all there, time. I will, I will probably say at the beginning of almost every strategy or like not strategy, but like sitting down to plan for mm -hmm. a day or week or whatever, that's what I open first. Like I open my Google analytics and I have a special dashboard that pulls all the information I want. Mm -hmm. And I immediately want to know like the top 10 pins or the top 10 landing pages getting the most pins. And that's like my number one. And then Pinterest analytics might be like once a month, but tailwind analytics, I would say, then I would open tailwind after Google. And all kind of like cross compare. Really so. Like once a week or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And my team has Scythe, 
which Scyph helps funnel Google Analytics into these cool little widgety dashboard things we have set up. So that's that's really how I teach uh, my account specialists to inform their strategy as well as go to Google Analytics, like see what's happening. You can segment dates, right? Like you can even see like mm -hmm. what's being clicked on in this week's worth of time. And sometimes with Pinterest, especially this last holiday season we came out of, you can get a lot of spikes, like a lot of peaks and valleys. So like yeah. seeing when the virality has happened, okay. I think it's really important as well. So can you give us an example of something that you might see and then how you would act on it? Well, I think number one is let's say, well, let's take even example, like my how to clean up Pinterest boards. That's, you know, if you see my Pinterest graph, like in Google Analytics, it's like really flat. And December 16th, it's like, psh, 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 psh. I mean, it's just up oh. this mountain, which is very interesting because yeah. I don't get a lot of traffic mostly because my account is a practice account. So daily, it's probably like 200 sessions per day. And now it's like five or 600. So that's quite a big jump mm -hmm. for me. So if I was going to look at that, I would go back to that post or I would tell my client, hey, this is taking off. What do you need to do to really optimize this post? Get whatever you can on there. If it's a product, is the product in stock? Can people click on, if it's not in stock, do you have a redirect set up? Like, mm -hmm. how do you really capture that traffic and, and make sure you're doing what you can with it to make sure it's working for you. Yeah. So then I would tell our clients that too, like, hey, this is taking off, it's grown by such and such percent let's hop over and look at it, maybe create a new image, whatever it might be. And, and in fact, the first time that post did go crazy on Pinterest, we did create a second image and we did make a picture of the download and found that that increased our email opt-ins for that post. So you just really want to ask yourself, what can I do with this? Okay. If, if people are walking through the door to my site, that's kind of what it is. What am I going to do with that to be like, the host and the only way I know if there's a party happening on that, you know, post is through Google analytics. So, okay. I greet them. Welcome to my I party. <laughs> Welcome to my party. And here's some things you can sign up for. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Cool. So, ha all right. So you, you mentioned you're going to pin it more because it's taking off now. So yeah. that, that makes sense. Um, Okay. So do you ever go like on, go right on Pinterest and see kind of what's trending and how you can play into that? Yeah, I don't do it as often as I would like, but I think once a month or probably twice a week, mm -hmm. um, a lot that will actually draw me back to Pinterest is my friends who are non-marketers who send me pins. I uh -huh. find that the messaging feature between my friends is really active really? and okay. yeah, it's really crazy. In fact, we were talking about it over Christmas that, um, and people will send you pins too, or they'll message you on Pinterest as well. You, so look at your inbox every once in a while. You never know if there is an actual genuine share <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Um, but I like to look at just generally what's happening, what is popular, what are people pinning in the explore feed, yes. what's trending. I like to pay attention to how video is being received because right. video is still so new to the platform. So like, where is Pinterest putting it? And how important are they making it? Because I still just think we're learning a lot about video on Pinterest and it's so common on Facebook and Instagram, but it's not on Pinterest. So how are users interacting with it? That's how I always want to see like, cause an individual user drives what happens on a mark on a social media platform. Like they are Absolutely. the front and center. It's not us as marketers. So what yeah. are they doing? What are they pinning? No, it was not written. It was not built for marketers. So. No, yeah. no, I don't really care. To, no. <laughs> so we have to get into the world, the mind of the pinner and become the pinner, which makes it fun. Yeah. Okay. So like once a month or so, I like to check on my group boards too, because mm. mostly because I've heard people saying things like, I think group boards are ruining my account and I never want to be in a bad neighborhood. I never want a client or someone I care about to be in a bad neighborhood, meaning a group board that's spammy and um, sketchy. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So check on those because a good group board can go bad. Fitness. So go <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So go check on that like every month or so in board insights and in Tailwind is good. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see what else have we got. All right. So we, wow, we don't have that much time, but I have I main questions that play into strategy. Like, 
Can we can we talk about what to leave out of your strategy? Yes, definitely. Those are some good ones. Yes. Okay. You go first. <laughs> okay. So on the list we have manual pinning. And I'm going to address this because we have had a lot of conversation in the Facebook group that I have mm -hmm. about manual pinning versus um, scheduled pinning using a scheduler like Tailwind. And we did a test in a study that said there was no difference between manual and scheduled. It didn't really matter. It didn't, Pinterest didn't favor you because you manual pinned. The only advantage that I think people have of manual pinning is that they're engaging in the platform. However, I think you can be scheduling like we schedule all of our clients and still be actively using the platform, which you should be. So if you're paying attention to where the clicks are happening, your board insights, you're using the analytics in Tailwind and Google, scheduling is totally fine. So don't feel like you have this obligation to be on the platform to manual pin because Pinterest likes it more. Like <sighs> just your whole goal is just to be active on the platform and engaged with your end user. Yeah. Beyond that, it doesn't matter. There's no tricks. And you and I have gone back and forth multiple times to say, what is there a trick? Am I missing something? That's the crazy part about marketing on Pinterest is there is no trick to the system. You can't trigger the system to do something else for you because you figured out the algorithm. Like no, it's smart. It just doesn't work like that. It is yeah. smart. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's smarter than we are, but yeah. yeah. So manual pinning. I mean, I think people feel like you remember the big debate about Facebook. If you use a scheduler, does Facebook throttle your reach? And mm -hmm. it would go, yes, it does. Yes. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Well, the, the thing that Pinterest is looking for is, are you using an approved partner tool? Mm -hmm. So there are several ones that are, completely approved and they do not penalize for that use. But there's always, I mean, it's always a good idea to use the features on the platform too, like going in and repinning from time to time. But, oh my goodness, <laughs> I don't know how I people know. have time to do it. <laughs> you know, and that's a really good point. And what I just had told somebody in this previous consult call was, choose a scheduler that makes you efficient and gives you the tools you need to make a really great informed decision about your account. You don't want a scheduler that pulls you away from it and sets it too much on auto because the problem with that is then you're not touching base with it. You're not interacting with your user. Mm -hmm. And if something is taking you hours to do, don't do it. Like, that's why I switched to Tailwind from another scheduler like three years ago, just because it took so much of my time. Mm -hmm. And when I switched, it was like, I'm so much faster at this and my team is so much faster. So that's a big part of it is how productive can you be and still get all of the tools that you need. Right, I agree. And I, I'll tell you that Tribes has made a world of difference for me because all the content that I could ever want to pin is right in my Tribes. And I know the people and I know the content's good. So huge time saver. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about something else that we should leave out because it's a big time suck. Mm -hmm. And that would be deleting pins. Oh. And that's your favorite. I know. I wish I would just die. I think it's been like four years ago. Yeah. No, was it four? It was five, three years ago. Yes. Okay. Just don't, just don't. just don't. There's no, again, it, there's no trick to the system. If you want to delete a pin because it doesn't really fit your brand anymore, go for it, but be very smart about it. Don't delete a pin that's getting activity or bringing a lot of traffic. Like you're kind of cutting it off at the, right. yeah. But the And the other thing is too, we, ha we have both seen this where pins that, that you pinned three months ago didn't do anything and didn't do anything. And all of a sudden they take off. Yeah, so we have if, several clients that have had that happen. Yeah, so if the pin is a good pin for your account and your followers, there's no reason to spend your time going back and deleting them. Just, you know, if they didn't take off and they never did, then you maybe you need to revisit your strategy and think about what, what you're pinning as opposed to going back and deleting. But it doesn't, like, hurt you. Like, yeah. there's nothing in the algorithm that says, like, you have too many. I mean, you can read a too many pins threshold. It's, like, 300,000 <laughs> pins. But... Mm. Yeah. Come on, that's a lot that's of pins. A lot of pins. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You're you're next. All right. So next is follow unfollow. I just <laughs> crack up at this. Um, it's a very popular Instagram strategy. Uh huh. It does not work on face or on Pinterest. Why not? Because people don't follow people anymore. <laughs> like they don't even notice it. And if you do follow someone, they're like, "Who followed me?" Like, Why? <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, because the joke is it's the introvert's platform, right? Yes. Like we I want to function, <laughs> right? Like Lee, exactly. Don't talk to me. And so even you have commenting that feels strange. I am really curious about the tried this. And I think if you want to do something that builds engagement, watch what people are putting on your tried this. And if they're sharing pictures, I think that is a super powerful tool of engagement that we saw mid year last year that I think might become front and center. And Pinterest is prompting people to do it. You know, when I saved a drink pin last week, they came back a couple of days later on my app and said, what'd you think of this? Did you try oh, it? Share nice. a photo. So, I mean, people are actually, users are doing that. So, the follow and follow followers don't translate to clicks. Like they're just social proof. If you want that, get something like the Milo tree app or tell your people to follow you. Just, just ask people to follow you who are a part of your tribe. Right. Like, and, that, and that's the point, right? If they're coming to your website, if they're on your email list, it makes sense to get them to follow you because it's just another yes. place to interact with you. Um, right. I love the thought about the, the tried it and, you can respond when people mm -hmm. post a picture or comments, which is great. So do you see that on many pins other than food and drink? I need to do a little more digging on it actually to check that out. Right now <laughs> I do just see food and drink and it, what we've also noticed the correlation between those pins actually are the ones that are highest in search, getting yes. the most clicks to the website. Yes, and so sense. that's important to note too, that the, that engagement piece is adding to that ranking in some way, but I need to look to see, I think some DIY maybe, um, yeah, or I have seen project. product pictures. So if like people get a product, they'll take a picture of it in their house. Okay. Good. So yeah, if you sell products and you can take, you know, you can see what people are doing with them. It's really smart. Yeah. And, and I, I can't remember where this happened, but I suggested to somebody who had, um, who might have some user generated Users weren't savvy and you did themselves get grab the picture with permission and post that as a tried it. It's always so it's going to show that that it's the authors tried right. it. But so you would say, you know, this is my product and I I'm sharing this tried it because my client made this out of it. And mm -hmm. she said this. So as long as I think as long as you're upfront about it, it would be a, a way to do it. It's kind of a lot yeah. of manual work, but I think it's worth it. So I would try like it. once a month. I think you should do that for sure. Check out yeah. your tried it. It's like check out on your phone. Look at those popular pins and yeah. see what they're bringing up. Yeah. So we kind of com commented on this <laughs> um, commenting when whenever I promote a pin and it starts doing really well, I start getting all these nice posts. Great job. All these yeah. comments. That's pretty much that's the only commenting that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you can see it a lot in the Explorer feed. If you want to see where like people are making hilarious comments, just go to the Explorer feed and you'll see just like, awesome, great, LOL. <laughs> right, and the Explorer feed for, if you haven't been there, it's um, on the on desktop, it's to the right of the search bar. It's that little compass thing. You just click mm -hmm. on that and you get to. And it's the same, I don't know if you can see this with the, but it's the little um, compass there at the bottom. And okay. when you click it, then it will pop up and hashtags are at the top on your mobile. Oh, so, but yeah, there's what's trending. Imani Kawanza. I don't know what that is. Uh, Goddess goals. That. I'm learning. Uh, so they'll tell you, yeah, trending in today's videos. Oh, there you go. Videos. Tapestry okay. crochet patterns. See, we're going down the Pinterest rabbit hole right here live on Facebook. <laughs> Okay, so um, that's another one, Kate, that, that we should touch on is hashtags. A new part of your Pinterest strategy needs to be using hashtags. And it, there's a lot of confusion out there about how they work. Um, I saw somebody in a Facebook group say, I just went and um, fixed all the keywords and added hashtags to 700 of my old pins. And I hope no. it was worth it. And I said, oh, oh I no way. way. I really hate to tell you this, but... It's not worth it. It's not. I wanted. I didn't want her to do any more. So I explained yes. that it's fresh pins. It's not repins. It's not your old pins. If you do a hashtag search on desktop, you're going to see it. They are mm -hmm. date stamped. 
Mm-hmm. Well, it'll tell you how long ago. Like one hour like to, yeah. Or a couple of weeks at the most. Mm-hmm. So no, do not go back. But going forward, this is a completely separate way people are going to be searching. And I'm not sure how many people are actually entering a hashtag search, mm-hmm. but I'm quite sure people are clicking on the hashtags in descriptions. It's yeah, like, especially if they are uh, they go to that search and they see the hashtag at the top. If yeah. Pinterest funnels them towards that and prompts them to do it, but I don't think they're doing like hashtag Pinterest marketing. No, nah, no. But if they see a yeah. pin they like and they're like, oh, I want to I go down that rabbit hole, they might click on it on the hashtag inside that description, which is kind of what I'm counting on. Mm-hmm. So I think to have the relevant hashtags for the content you're creating in mind is, should be a part of your strategy and also to have your branded hashtags. Yes, definitely. So that's, those are the only hashtags that I'm using on promoted pins anymore. I would be branded because I don't, I don't want to send people with my paid pin to somebody else's content. I want to make sure mm-hmm. it goes to content about me. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about briefly what is in the planner this month. Mm, what is in the planner? So the planner every month is broken down and I'm going to show you my copy and my goal <laughs> is to actually get this printed out in color and bound. But right now you're going to have this sketchy um, printer is out of ink copy. <laughs> right nice. So it's broken yeah. down into what to pin, what to promote content planning ideas, tip of the month and monthly action tips. And when we say what to pin, this is what do you need to pin daily? So a lot of that is spring cleaning, healthy recipes, Valentine's Day. I would hold off on Valentine's Day for like a couple more weeks, maybe like mid January, because everybody right now is focused on healthy. If you drop Mm. some chocolate, you might not get (laughs) interesting, conflicting thoughts there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So organization tips, spring break, fitness, like people are thinking of spring stuff right now. Like people are taking warm vacations. A lot of people are going to Hawaii. This is the highest time that people fly to Hawaii. They're ready to get out of Dodge. (laughs) I understand. Yes. And when we say what to promote, we're talking about running promoted pin campaigns. Mm -hmm. So fitness tips, healthy food, business planning, habit building, Super Bowl. Um, And then year specific planner downloads. If you have a planner, either a physical planner that you sell or planner downloads, this is definitely the time to get it out there and promoting it and then letting people know about that. Um, So let's just um, just clarify just a little bit more. So we're talking about what to pin. Yes. Like you said, what to pin now, because you have a little time for that to ramp up for, for yeah. it to get into the, into the smart feed. What to promote is, okay, people need to see this right now. Mm-hmm. So you may need to pay to get the ultimate exposure. Cause you don't want to wait for next year. If you have this great, um, what do we have? Like habit building resource, mm-hmm. you know, if you wait till next year, yeah, it might have tons of organic traffic, but you want it now. So mm-hmm. think about it now. Want it now. And somebody asked a great question about is promoted pins a good part of a, is it a good strategy? Yes, it is a very good thing to do. And the great part that we love about promoted pins is that when you're, when you promote a pin, it's still there. It's not gone. You know, whereas if you promote a Facebook post, it's gone and you have to pay to promote it again. Your promoted pin is still around, even if you're not paying. And everyone who has saved that promoted pin, all of their pins are still around. Yep. You know, you know, there is a, a way now that you can do expiring promoted pins. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. So if you have just a short term sale or something, oh. it has no save button on it and it will expire and just disappear. You can't what? do it at the dashboard. You have to talk to a rep. But yeah, that is <laughs> I cool. know. I think probably only um, the bigger brands would want to do that because yeah. I think for me, I would even if it was a short term something, I had to find a way to redirect something that would just make it still right for me. Right. Okay. So the other one is content planning ideas. So St. Patrick's Day and Easter. Yes. So that would be the one right there. So Um, content planning ideas. What are we doing with those? um, Those are really what we're thinking of is what's going to happen in March. Like let's say March and 
I don't know, April. I don't know when Easter is this year, but oh, you're cool. looking out a little bit further. Like, how can I really try to plan ahead so that I'm not caught off guard? Right. So, so you're like vlogging right now, like you're yes. right. Up. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. You're yeah. So you're, you're not like somebody actually in our group had actually made a really interesting comment. She it was after Christmas. She had said, what do I do with this Christmas post? I really, I, I didn't get it up in time. I want to get it out there. It's okay to put it out there, but then next year be thinking a little bit sooner. Like you, <laughs> yes. you want to go. A little bit there. So that's yep. what we're talking about with content planning ideas. Like how can you really get this um, into your stream and really thinking far ahead? So that's right. Yeah. Cool. Well, we are way over time. I took you took too much of your time. I'm sorry, but it was fun. It was fun. I it feel like we fun. could do part two. Yeah, we may have to in in uh, next month. So we meant to get to a couple of assessments, but we didn't get there. So I'm going to put this in here. Um, if you would like us to take a look at your Pinterest account while we're on air and offer a couple suggestions, there's that form there you can, you can enter. Um, we didn't get to it this time, but maybe next time we won't, won't talk so much. I don't know. It's hard not to talk so much. There's so much. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always yeah. fun. And please do get that planner. It's going to help you to put your strategy into action. So you know kind of what you have to do every week, every month, um, every day. And that will kind of guide you about what to do. So we hope that this was helpful to you. Um, now, if you're feeling like, oh, my goodness, yeah, that was nice, but I'm never going to do it. You, <laughs> you can always get Kate and her team to do it for you. So Kate, Yay. I hope you will share a link to your services page in the comments. Yes, I will go into the comments and share that as well. But you can always go to simplepinmedia.com and there's a ton of information there. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that. And next month we are going to talk more a little more about strategy, but about how Pinterest can inform your content marketing strategy. So that's something like we talked about at the beginning. A lot of people struggle with coming up with the content, whether it's the images or the blog posts or the product listings, whatever it is, and how we can use Pinterest to support that. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for being here, Kate. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you again soon. All right. Bye.